hi, it's Dave, it's Stable Vehicle Contracts. I hope you're doing okay. So we've been getting lots and lots of questions from you guys recently about Golf R's, uh, like this one behind me. Um, various different questions, so we've picked out a few of the best ones, and we're gonna do a little Q&A session right now with those questions. But before we do that, if you wanna ask us any questions, you do it by leaving a comment, and if you don't subscribe to us already, you need to go and do that right now as well so you don't miss any of our future videos. So Phil is the uh, the quiz master today. Ask away, Phil. What is the realistic fuel economy? So around town on a motorway. Yeah, so well, so we are, um, we've, I've been driving this car now for a few days and uh, my sort of daily commute is just over 30 miles. Well, seven, well about 60, 65 miles uh, in total. And that is a mix of just normal roads, motorways, dual carriageways as well. So there's a good variation of different driving styles in there. I don't drive like a lunatic, 70 miles an hour on the motorway. Um, just drive it normally, basically. And I've been getting um, around 30.4 uh, MPG combined uh, out, out this particular Golf R, which is a manual. Um, and I've, well, VW say it should be about 37, 38. So. I've been pretty impressed with that really, so about 34 is what you're going to get. And number two, is it worth it over the Golf GTI? <sighs> That's a very open question yeah. you've picked there for me. So I'll answer it in two parts. First one is if you were to take them, you know, money was no object, so or they were both the same price, then I think all day long you'd be going for the Golf R. Um, obviously it's a much faster car. Um, a lot sportier car so and it's something a little bit different as well you don't see him as, as much on the road as you do the GTI so I'd you know if money was no object I'd definitely be going for the Golf R um, unfortunately money is, is not no object so there is going to be a difference in price um, it can be quite considerable between a GTI and a Golf R it really depends on your budget um, GTI is a very very good car I would have no hesitations in, in taking up one of those. So it really comes down to your budget, unfortunately. I can't give you a definitive answer on that one. So this one's leasing related. What happens if you decide you want to end an agreement before the car is actually delivered? So it depends on the supplier, what they will charge you. Basically, if you uh, decide to order a vehicle and then not, uh, not take delivery uh, of it, there may be a charge and you'd have to speak to your provider, your leasing company uh, about that before you place your order. Ourselves, Stable Vehicle Contracts, um, we will always try to resell the vehicle uh, or release it to another customer. Um, however, there are occasions we can't do that. So if a customer's ordered a very specific, specific vehicle with a unique spec, which might make the car quite expensive or just not most people's taste, it can be quite difficult to resell it. And in that occasion, we may get a charge from the from the supply and dealership uh, for cancelling. If we do that, we do get that. We will unfortunately have to pass it on to the customer. But more often than not, we're able to um, we are able to resell the vehicle before it gets to that. If I've taken a 24 month leaf lease out, can I extend it so it's 36 months? So um, again, it varies on uh, with the finance company who your uh, who your lease agreement is with. Most of the ma major sort of funders um, don't allow you to uh, to extend by a year. Um, they will allow you to extend allow you to extend by um, a couple of months just to tie you over if you've not quite got your new car sorted. Having said that, um, it really depends what suits them. So if you've got I say a Golf R when these come on sort of ridiculously cheap lease deals um, the finance company might find they've got a surge of these cars coming back to them all at one time which obviously is going to have an impact on the, um, the resale value in the auction um, so they may then look to uh, extend uh, people's leases by 12 months so they're staggering over the return of those vehicles so um, it really depends on the vehicle you've got, the funder you're with, and, and you know when you took it. But it can happen. Is the Golf R better than an Audi S3? Again, um, all down to individual taste, I would say. Very similar car, obviously, same engine. Um, Audi being the premium uh, of the two brands, 
if I were to choose one and the money wasn't um, an object, I'd go Audi. Would you? What do you do? Uh, well, I, I, I quite like the spec on the Golf. Mm. You know, with the uh, Active Info, ACC, the standard. Has this golfer got the sports exhaust? So this one right there. No. Okie doke. No, <laughs> it's not. Um, so there's quite a lot of um, talk about exhaust with golf hours at the moment. Uh, and obviously now you can order um, the golf hour. You will be able to order it in October with the performance pack, which comes with um, the Acropovic. Uh, exhaust system uh, on there which is uh, a lighter exhaust system and brings a whole unique sort of uh, engine tone to it but you can also order that separately for the separately for the Golf R I think that's around £2,795 to add that as a just a, as a separate option. How does ACC work on manual transmission vehicles? Not as well as on as on DSGs. So basically, uh, ACC. If you're not sure what that is, it's uh, adaptive cruise control. Uh, it's a great, great feature. What it does, it's basically well, like cruise control but better. So cruise control. Um, when you're uh, set at 50 miles an hour and the car in front of you starts to brake, you have to brake. It knocks off the cruise control. You have to put it back on. It's a bit of a pain in the ass. Adaptive cruise control. When you set the uh, adaptive cruise control on, you set your, your speed, you also set your radar distance, so how far um, you want to stay behind the car in front. And it sets that and it maintains that distance. So if the car in front starts to brake, the ACC, the adaptive cruise control, kicks in and your, your car will brake and maintain the same distance uh, as the car in front. And it works absolutely seamlessly on, uh, on an automatic uh, vehicle. And it's just not quite as good as, as a manual, but no fault for the ACC purely because you're in a manual car. So what you have to do is you have to uh, uh, change gears um, as the car's slowing down or speeding up. You have to change gears in accordance to that. So it's just a bit tricky to get to get the hang of it, but you know it's still ten times better than a, a normal cruise control. Does having a manual negate certain options like ACC and launch control? Well, it, it doesn't, as I said, it doesn't uh, negate um, ACC. Launch control, it doesn't, the uh, the manual uh, Golf R does not have launch control, um, whereas it does on the DSG, which is why um, the DSG um, 0 to 62 is around 0.2 uh, of a second or 0.3 of a second faster, something like that, because you've got that launch control, uh, launch control helping you get away from the blocks. So, uh, Thank you very much firstly for your questions, uh, keep them coming uh, in the comments section, please keep asking and we'll keep uh, trying to give you answers. Um, so thanks for watching, I hope you've enjoyed the video, if you have, don't forget to like, share and subscribe if you don't already. Thanks for watching, see you again soon.